language impairment or SLI is identified when a child's language development is well behind that of other children and is out of step with their other skills. Assessment is usually prompted because somebody notices that the child isn't talking like other children and the child may not understand what others are saying. SLI is only identified if there's no obvious factor that could account for the child's language difficulties. So, for example, we would rule out cases where hearing loss could explain language delay or where the child has lack of experience with English. If your child's being evaluated, you may be asked to complete a checklist or to give examples of the types of difficulties that your child's experiencing. Assessment of children's language difficulties is usually carried out by a speech and language therapist, sometimes an educational psychologist, or they may both contribute to the assessment. They'll observe the child, they'll listen to how he or she talks, and this information will then guide them in selecting appropriate assessments to test the particular language skills that seem to be a problem. Language assessment will typically involve standardised tests that give us an idea of how far behind the child is in terms of both producing expressive language and in understanding. Standardised tests are tests that have been given to a large group of children of different ages so that they give us an idea of what's a typical level of performance for a child of a given age on the test. SLI is termed specific language impairment to distinguish it from language problems that are part of more general developmental difficulties. A child who has SLI will score in the normal range if assessed with tests that don't require any language. These are known as tests of non-verbal ability. Some definitions of SLI require that there's a specific size gap between language and non-verbal abilities. But research suggests this isn't very useful. Provided the child's non-verbal abilities are broadly in normal limits, the size of the gap between language and non-verbal skills doesn't seem to give a very good indication of the child's potential to learn. You may hear various labels being used. Developmental dysphasia is commonly used in continental Europe to talk about a child with specific language impairments. It's not so popular in the English-speaking world where people feel that dysphasia is more often used for adults who've got some sort of a language problems acquired in the context of neurological disease. Because SLI is a difficulty in learning language in a child without any neurological problems, it seems more appropriate to use just the descriptive term SLI. Other terms you may hear, specific developmental language disorder or primary language impairment, all have the same meaning as specific language impairment or SLI. In the UK it's become common to hear the term speech, language and communication needs or SLCN. This is widely used in educational settings. It's an umbrella category that includes SLI but it also includes many other kinds of communication problems. If you'd like more information on the research underlying this topic there's a slide presentation that accompanies this video which gives more details and some references.